Hello and welcome to Watch Releases Recap for the week of November 10th until November the 17th. Let's begin with Lajins and their new Legend Diver. The first Lajins Legend Diver was released in late 1950s and it is an important watch in horological history. In 2007, Lajins reintroduced Legends Diver to its catalog. Now this one was a bit larger than the original from late 1950s, it was 42 millimeters in diameter and initially it had no date complication, however over the time as the tastes in watches changed, the most current version had a date window which brought some criticism from the watch collecting community. Well now in 2023, Lajins is introducing a new version of this Legends Diver and they listen to the feedback from the watch collecting community. First of all, it is smaller, it's 39 millimeters in case diameter. It is also quite thin, under 13 millimeters, 12.7 millimeters to be exact, which is super impressive, especially for these compressor style cases. Usually these type of watches tend to be a little bit larger because you do have to house a bezel under the crystal. So that whole construction takes up some space. The other change that a lot of collectors will be happy about is Lajin's getting rid of the date window. Back on the old version, the 42 millimeter version, we had a date window which was a bit of an eyesore and it broke up the symmetry of the dial. Happy to say the date window is finally gone. On top of these cosmetic and size updates, we also have a new movement. This one is powered by the Calibur L888.6 which is a Lajin's in-house automatic movement that beats at 25,200 vibrations per hour. It has 21 joules and 72 hours of power reserve, which is quite a bit. This is also a COSC certified movement, but the way Lajin's certifies their movements is slightly different from what COSC usually requires. They actually test the accuracy of the movement in a cased watch for, I think, something like 15 days, which is really good. On top of all of that, you also get ISO certification with 300 meters of water resistance. You have two different dial options to choose from, the blue one or the black one. I prefer the black one, I think it looks very sharp. And you also get a choice between a strap or beads of rice bracelet. I prefer the bracelet, I think it looks great and the price difference is not major. So on the bracelet it's 3550 euros and on the strap it's 3300 euros. So you're only looking at a difference of about 250 euros between the two. If the difference is so small, always go for the stainless steel bracelet. The three new Seiko Marine Master models. Seiko has been trying to reintroduce some of their vintage models back into the catalog, like the 62 Masa Majas and this Marine Master line of watches. Now this line was introduced back in 2000 and the thing that made this model different was the case design. This was the big over the top diver watch. I think it had 44 millimeter case diameter. It also came in a monoblock case design. It was this tough proper diver watch as opposed to all of the other diver watches from the 90s. Now Seiko is reintroducing this Marine Master line of watches in a slightly different case. To me this new case, it's a brand new case design although it kind of looks like existing Seiko cases. Apparently it is new to this model. It is sort of a combination of the old Marine Masters as well as that 62 Moss design philosophy. We have three different color combinations to choose from. There is the blue one, the black one and the silver one. The silver one is a limited edition to 1000 pieces. The other two are going to be just regular pieces in the collection. As opposed to the old Marine Masters, this one comes in a smaller case, 39 and a half millimeters in diameter, only 12.3 millimeters thick. It is an ISO certified diver watch with 200 meters of water resistance and it is powered by the new caliber 6L37 which is an automatic in-house movement with 45 hours of power reserve and a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour. This movement was introduced in the new model that was released earlier this year so I think Seiko is really banking on this movement to become a big thing and they better be banking on it to become a big thing because the price point of this watch is quite expensive. It comes at 2,800 US dollars. That's not cheap. I mean, Seiko has been raising their prices gradually, but almost $3,000 for this watch is quite a bit, especially if you look at that SPB line of watches that could be had for a fraction of the price and the two watches look very similar. In fact, I prefer the look of those watches over the look of this watch. I don't think this watch offers anything special outside of the new movement, so I think that's why Seiko is really banking on this movement. But I don't know if the movement alone is enough to warrant such a high price point. 
Maybe the texture dial will do it for people. I don't know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about the price point and the difference between this and the SPB line of watches. Would you go for this? And if so, tell us why. I'm genuinely curious what people think about this watch and why they would actually choose one. So leave your comments below. Uh, moving on to the next release. Christopher Ward C63 Celeste. Christopher Ward has been on a roll lately. They are releasing models left and right. This one is the newest addition to their sort of classier looking watches. Just a few weeks ago, I covered the C1 Moon Phase. Now we have another night sky themed watch. And this one is actually quite nice. It is part of their C63 collection, which is a collection of slightly smaller watches. They're about 36 millimeters in diameter, and they have a pretty short lug to lug distance of under 43 millimeters. The watches are also very thin, just over 11 millimeters in thickness. And I also like the fact that they still come with proper water resistance, 150 meters. A lot of times these dressier timepieces only come with 30 meters of water resistance, which of course limits the type of usage you can get out of the watch. The star of the show is undoubtedly this adventuring type dial. I really like how these dials look and in person they are quite beautiful. They're hard to capture on pictures and videos. This one, just like the other C63 models, is powered by the same Celita SW200 movement, and it comes with the optional five link bracelet, or you could have it on the strap. Now, the price of this one on the strap is 960 US dollars, and on the bracelet, it's just under $1,200, $1,160 to be exact. I think the pricing is fair, and the watch looks really good. Christopher Ward is known for their good quality, so I think watch collectors will like this one. The Zenith Defy Skyline Night Surfer Time and Tide Watches Collaboration. This is the second time Zenith and Time and Tide watches are collaborating. They actually released a watch in 2011 called the Classic Nighttime Surfer. The two watches, this new release and the old one, do look like they're part of the same collection and I hope that they will release another one in the future. Now the one from 2011 was limited to 100 pieces, now this one is limited to 200 pieces, so it seems like that collaboration went pretty well. This new version is based on Zenith Defy Skyline skeleton design, in the same case with a similar dial, of course it has some cosmetic changes, like the fact that the case and the bracelet are finished with this microblasting, which makes it more matte and darker, I think it looks really nice and I hope that Zenith does more watches with this type of finish and also the dial features a slightly different color combination from your standard Skyline skeleton. The case size is still exactly the same as your standard version, 41 millimeter case diameter, just under 12 millimeters in thickness and from my experience these watches tend to wear a little bit larger so you do have to try one on to see how it fits on your wrist. It doesn't look good on everyone's wrist. It is also powered by the same El Pamero caliber 3620. It's an in-house automatic movement. It has a five hertz frequency, which means it beats at 36,000 vibrations per hour. Super impressive, very smooth ticking. It has 26 joules and it has 60 hours of power reserve. This movement is a masterpiece. It's an incredible achievement in engineering. It is also a beautiful movement to look at. So that's why you have semi-skeletonized dial. You also can see the movement through the display case back. Overall, I think it's a very good looking watch. Just like the watch that Zenith released last week, I think this one should be part of their regular catalog. I think it's a very good looking watch and even the price is somewhat fair. 12,000 Swiss francs, which is expensive, but it's just slightly more than your standard version of this watch. So well done, Zenith and Time and Tide. The Bell & Ross BRX5 Green Loom. The Bell & Ross introduced Loom series of watches back in 2017, and in the last six years, they've been introducing different variations in this collection. This newest variation actually looks quite different from the rest of the catalog because of the case, shape, and design, but mainly because the case is fully loomed. Loomed cases on a watch are kind of rare because they're difficult to execute and also that durability comes into question. So this one apparently is partially titanium and partially this green luminous fiberglass composite. Again, I'm not sure how durable this watch will be over the years, but at least brand new, at least looking at the pictures, it does look very cool. On top of the case being fully loomed, there is quite a bit of loom on the dial as well, and this is a very nicely designed dial. It's a little different from the standard Bell & Ross 
instrument like dials, this one has more of your traditional watch look. So you have a date complication at the three o'clock position, and then you have the power reserve at the nine o'clock position and the semi-skeletonized set of hands that are of course loomed. The case size is reasonable, 41 millimeter diameter, just under 12 millimeters in thickness, so it should fit fine on majority of wrists. Now this is a limited edition to 500 pieces and it's priced around 12,000 euros. I think that's quite a bit of money, especially for the movement that you get. You get the caliber 323 automatic movement. It's a Kinesi movement, which is not great. It is COSC certified and it has a high beat rate, 28,800 vibrations per hour. Also, it has 70 hours of power reserve. But I think for $12,000, there are so many different options to choose from that Bell and Ross might have a hard time selling this watch, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that cool loomed case is going to attract a lot of buyers and they're going to sell it out. What do you guys think? Do you like this watch or do you think it's just a gimmick? The Oris Diver 65 Cotton Candy. Oris Cotton Candy line of watches came out a few years ago and it was a big hit. Essentially, it's a bronze Diver 65 with colorful dial options. I've seen quite a few of these watches out and about and they always attract a lot of attention. I think they're very cool watches and whenever I see a person wearing one, I know they're a true watch enthusiast because very few people would buy this watch as their very first watch. Usually this is your fifth, sixth, maybe tenth watch in a collection. Now this new addition to the collection is just a new dial color and unlike these cotton candy crazy colors, this one is a black dial with gilt accents. And I think it looks very sharp. I especially like it on the bronze bracelet. It looks incredible and these watches are very comfortable to wear. 38 millimeter diameter, they're under 12 millimeters in thickness, they're powered by the Celita SW200 movement. That's why the price is a bit cheaper. You can find one for about 2,500 euros on the rubber strap and about 2,750 euros for the one on the bronze bracelet but get the one on the bronze bracelet. The only thing that I'm not a big fan of with the look of this watch is that date wheel font is done in white color. Why not have it in the same shade of gilt as the rest of the dial? I think it would look so much better. And that's it. Those were the watch releases that I wanted to highlight this week. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this in the future and leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what releases stood out to you. I always enjoy reading your comments. Thanks for watching this one and we'll see you next time.